So for this story that I wrote for Time Magazine, I wanted to go back to school in the year 2012 and see how it has changed. You know, we'd been hearing for years, right, that the price of college has become unsustainable, that the student debt load is now greater than the national credit card debt, um, and you're starting to see with the cuts in public funding to public universities and community colleges, you're starting to see you know, truly shocking increases in tuition. And at the same time, we've been hearing a lot about these new online courses. Of course, online courses have been around for decades now, but these were new because they were being offered by prestigious universities. They were full courses. They were free. They were open to anyone. And, and hundreds of thousands of people were taking these classes. So it seemed like a good opportunity to kind of wade into college as we know it in the year 2012 and try to experience it in, in all of its different formats or some of its different formats. So I decided to take physics in several different ways. I'd never taken physics before. It was something I was curious about finally taking. So I signed up for what's called a MOOC, which is a massive open online course. This is one of these courses that you know tens of thousands of people around the world have been taking for free. And it was offered by a company called Udacity.com, which was started by uh, a few people who worked at Stanford University and have since left to, to create this startup. And I also took it, uh, I also dropped into a class at Georgetown University, you see the sort of other end of the spectrum, the most selective elite end of the spectrum. And then I also uh, went to a class at the University of the District of Columbia, which until recently was a community college, now is also a university, but is basically a relatively non-selective local college, which is how about 44% of Americans are now going to college. One of the things that surprised me about this was that the online classes in general were pretty terrible. So most of them, it was just like a camera in a room and a guy was lecturing. And so, great, he teaches at Princeton. I, you know, I'm not at Princeton. You know, there's not like bells ringing in the distance and leaves drifting to the ground. So I'm thinking, you're going to give me something more if I'm going to pay attention to you and not check my email because I'm sitting alone in a room. And then I did find this Udacity physics course, which was different. I mean, first of all, the professor was about 12, or he looked 12. He was really 25. And he didn't have tenure, and he didn't have a PhD. He had studied physics at MIT. But he just approached it totally differently. Even though he was teaching you physics in much the same way you would get if you were at Princeton, he also stopped every two or three minutes. So there were these short video snippets where he would be you know, kind of entertaining, but not, not hilarious, but entertaining, dis clear description of something. And he'd be writing you know, writing calculations and, you know, very personable guy. And then it would stop and ask you a question. So you'd, you really couldn't disengage for very long. It was like being in a class where you could get called on at any moment. The brain actually learns best in short snippets, interrupted, punctuated by questions. So where you have to, your brain has to sort of take what it's learned and manipulate it. Maybe make a connection to something you already knew, or maybe solve a problem that you haven't seen before. All of those things help you do something more than memorize the information and help you actually integrate it into your brain. Looking forward, I think there's really at least two ways this could go, right? I mean, on the one hand, I think that these free classes, if there are enough of them that are high quality, like the physics one that I described, then, then you might actually see something really cool, which is maybe we'll put some downward price pressure on some of the middle tier colleges. I don't think the, the community colleges or the elite colleges are going to be dramatically affected by this either way. I think those places are not going away, and probably for good reason. But the vast middle tier of colleges, you know, schools that you maybe haven't heard of, but kids are paying, you know, like $30,000 a year to go to, you know, it could be that as these free classes start to gain more credibility and maybe even college credits, which some of them are starting to do, people will start to evaluate, you know, am I really getting what I'm paying for? But I actually think what's maybe even more exciting than that is that it might put some upward pressure on the teaching quality that you see at a lot of schools. Because professors aren't incentivized to be great teachers. Like, that's not really why they're there. That's, that's not why they were hired. So particularly with some of these, some of these MOOCs, not all of them, uh, the, the focus has really been on the quality of the learning. And that's, a, that's exciting, because even though it sounds obvious, that's not how our university system has developed.